this will be the first episode with a brand new intro as well. So Ooh. that's well exciting. <laughs> Everyone get very excited. Right, I'm just gonna do the. Uh, I'm hype, lads. I'm hype. You're hyped. <laughs> too good. Too okay, too before we start, I've how forgotten... much swearing is acceptable? Oh, as loads. Much as, as much as want. possible. Oh, okay. We don't have sponsors, and I don't think we ever will. Okay, what fab? So we we can I I think... just talk without any filter then. Yeah. Deaf and blind. Uh, the That's... driving mall was on, and he was quite shocked at how sweary <laughs> we were. I got <laughs> when I, when I was on with his, I accidentally let out a few, and I kept having to apologise for it. Oh god! Um, oh god! <laughs> child friendly, child friendly podcast. I do think nothing. I still don't think nothing's the worst I've ever done, and. Uh, I might get slack for this now very briefly. I think the worst was when I called Gatland a mouthy cunt. Yeah. I think I think that's the furthest <laughs> I remember. Pushed. I remember that one because I showed a couple of friends that I was doing a podcast oh, and I just put it randomly in the middle and that was just the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it was timing. valid at the time though and I stand by it. England in possession. They haven't had much of this ball And it kicked it away again. Toby Flood. Don't towards... sink! It wasn't rugby, so we haven't played a game of rugby yet. I think we might have to go out and train after this. Up and over and Matty head over biscuit. Very interesting, very good, yeah. Very good. Three cheers for Zareli Bombo. Very good, very good. Top day. Yeah, top day, yeah. Hello and welcome to another Line Break Rugby podcast. You've got me, your host, Sav. Uh, today we've got a special guest. Uh, it's Geosaurus Rex, or G from Reddit. Um, yeah. Fred and Ed. So G, say hi. Hello. I think I'm a bit lost. Uh, Ed- is it, is it, what is rugby? <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a special sport that makes us superior to football. That's the. Oh, don't be starting that now. <laughs> oh, ah, I think That's... I understand. Okay, carry on. Sorry. Got, got it. Fred, uh, do you want to say hi? Uh, yeah, hi. You... Oh, there we go. See, I made you be able to say a normal word this time. Because you didn't, you didn't give me an order. You said, "Do you want to say hi?" Yeah. So That's, I, That's a I couldn't just repeat what you said. That wouldn't make any sense. To be fair, you could so have just said long... no. Could I could have yes. just said no, but I did want to say hi. So I could have, ju- I should have just said yes. You could have refused. Damn it! Can yeah. we start again? Um, this is the Fred. Top say level hi. Of my no, Fre- <laughs> Fred, Fred. Say goodbye. No. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> oh Christ! We're off to a really good start. This is strong. I'm um, here too. Hello. Hopefully, we power through oh, who are you? and come out the other side. So, G, we've invited you on. Um, to get a girl's perspective, I suppose. Well, that's uh, not, a not a huge deal that I'm a woman. Like... It's not a huge deal, know, but no, we we've never... We all the secret massive cock I have strapped to my leg right now. <laughs> As, um, CC's just popped up asking if you're on the pod. So yes, CC, if you listen to this, you are replaced. And <laughs> G is now <laughs> our Welsh correspondent. We're filling in more quotas, though, aren't we? Is that is that what it is? That it is seems... because as 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 good as CC is, he doesn't sound Welsh enough. That's and true. I feel like G fills that niche slightly better, along with the whole not being a man <laughs> thing. Um, but she just said that she's got one strapped to her leg. So how much? Yes, yeah, she uh, on Reddit. She doesn't particularly keep a secret of what she calls her monster dong. Is That's that... not really relevant to the podcast, but you know, it's just something that's come up a few times. Figuratively just a few speaking. Times. Like I, I, sometimes I have to assert my dominance, so I just like unstrap it from my leg and just whap it out on the table. <laughs> this is going to go so well. This is yeah. This is already <laughs> a really strong start. So um, we last time rugby? we yeah last time we had a, last time we had a guest on in Squidge, we asked him a couple of questions about uh, how he got into rugby and how he started to become interested. So. Gee, how did you become interested in rugby and start watching it? Well, basically, I am a Welsh child, so that sort of automatically makes any person interested in rugby, just being a Welsh child yeah. in general. But I tended to get like really, really into it, like to the borderline obsessive levels, about a few years ago, around the World Cup time, I think. I used to watch the international. So tw- twenty fifteen. Yeah, I used to watch internationals mm-hmm. every time, but and the Six Nations, but I never really watched much club rugby before. But I think it just sparked sparked an unhealthy addiction. So now I can't. Yeah. Stop. So did I mean? So what you mean CC... to say is your your passion coincides with the creation of line break, line break rugby? Oh, of course. 
That I mean, that's a yeah, that's a weirdly uh, accurate thing to actually say. Um, so please say it again, so we can recall that. <laughs> and smile. <laughs> <laughs> um, to stop talking on Slack it's actually, it keeps <laughs> popping up and I'm just seeing loads of so G's not getting these notifications CC's asking and she wants to know how much of your rugby affiliation and love comes um, from arses you know, just enjoy, <laughs> enjoying a, tow- a, a tight uh, pair of shorts uh, probably only about 1% I know it's shocking but I do actually like That's rugby as- for like, the game Mostly. Good. That's 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 uh, that's the answer. I actually we're trying expected. to we're trying to break down the stereotypes here, so that's a good answer. That is that's strong. Yeah, I don't um, want people to just think, oh, a girl liking sport, she just watches it for the hot men. If you understand me, like the hot yeah. men are a bonus, but it's very very much for the actual game itself. Were you? You already have outclassed all of us because we came on here and we went, oh, we might talk about the rugby championship. <laughs> And we've all we've all watched it. You've watched both games, and you had the stats ready in front of you, and you were ready to go on any talking point, pretty much. Well, I'd like to hope so. <laughs> so you, I mean, you're already above, and we and we consider ourselves interested in rugby. I mean, the reality is, Fred, did you watch any of the games oh, this, uh, well, yesterday? I watched both of them. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, I didn't. I didn't yeah, I watched that. them with French commentary as well, so I already know more than the people who work on TV because the commentary is absolutely <laughs> dire. <laughs> it was just unbelievable. They just say the most mundane stuff that they can say, possibly. Like, um, they were actually surprised when the All Blacks went to touch in the first half. So it was 6-0 oh, really? to Australia. They get, a, they get a penalty five metres away from the line, and they're super surprised mm-hmm. that they go for touch. So that must that might have been the first game they ever watched from the All Blacks, so congratulations <laughs> to them. Don't understand the concept of kicking for points when you get a penalty. No, they just went, oh... Surprising decision. I, we like it. We go like, no, it's not. It's not surprising. <laughs> you should like it, but it's really not surprising. It's what they do all the time. Yeah. Yeah, mainly because their kicker is Bowden Barrett, who can't kick. So. Yeah, I think it's, <laughs> I think they're just really bad at math, so they they want multiples of five or seven. <laughs> no, I I don't know if internationals bring out the well, they do. I know this for a fact. They bring out the noobs uh, kind of thing, commenting. But there were oh, so completely. many people like, oh, why is Bowden Barrett such a bad kicker? And it's kind of like it's, he's never it's not, not what he's done there this. for. Yeah, it's like it, it's it's not his job. It's, it's okay. He was better that, than Pollard. Yeah. On the days that he can kick, everyone else is fucked. I mean, that's true. I mean, that's true of every day when he doesn't kick either. <laughs> I mean, you just have to look at this. It was uh, the the halftime score was what seven six to Australia. Seven five. Uh, no, five. six five. Six, six five. five. Six, he and missed so, a kick. 6-5, he missed a kick, and so at 40 minutes, New Zealand were down a point, and then at full time, they had won by 25 points. So it's it, it doesn't matter that he can't, you know, can't always kick the ball between the posts, because but yeah, can you imagine the amount if... that he creates yeah. just by running the ball and his passing and kicking, I'm but, fairly sure yeah. he actually might have but scored imagine, a try. Yeah. But could you imagine if he could kick? Like how ridiculously yeah, if, if, un- unreasonable levels that noise. New Zealand would be? Yeah. If Neil Jenkins was coaching for the Kiwis, you know, I actually think Bowden Barrett would just be unstoppable force of nature. It would be one of these things where, I don't know, it'd be, I, don't, I don't really know. They'd have to play someone from another planet, I think I commented in the in the thread, because they would be unbeatable. Oh, yeah, like one of the, you'd have to like imbue the power of several rugby players into just one person, like the Monstars from Space Jam. <laughs> We don't reference uh, Space Jam enough on this podcast. I uh, feel it's a very apt uh, 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 thing, apt. though. Just apt. Yeah, it works. <laughs> it's just that. It does in my so, head, anyway. So just growing up in Wales meant that you were interested, and the 2015 World Cup uh, spiked, piqued your interest? I mean, I was more than interested, but I just feel like the World Cup plus brought it to like unhealthy addiction levels. Yeah, you're watching it more and posting more. I mean, you are the... Well, you were. I don't know if you've lost the title. You were the person who had posted the most on the subreddit. Yeah, Complete karma fiend. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if I'd lost that title, considering I have a bit of a life and a job now. Yeah, it's dropped off from... I mean, I was number <clears throat> eight, and CC was, like, five. CC was 
Oh, no, it depends on what metric you're looking at. Cause oh, okay. On, it was I either submitted CC's or comment. comment. Yeah, CC's comment to upvote ratio was the best, maybe. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think he had the best ratio. Probably Squidge has got that now, to be fair. Both him and Everything CC he'd... have quite high on that, because I was just more like spam absolute <coughs> nonsense, and everyone's just like, yeah, shut the fuck yeah. up, Georgia. G got on the board just by sheer volume. I'm... Absolutely. Well, volume, volume of uh, volume of comments is good. I, I, I might have been doing that as well, to be honest with you. The Squidge is definitely getting some automatic upvotes now as well. Yeah. So, uh, it's his name. He's, yeah. He's everything. Everything he's, he says is gold. He's actually famous now. <laughs> it's true. Re- recognized on the streets of. Uh, wait, where is it? Derby. Derby. Yeah. Recognized, <laughs> recognized on the streets of Derby. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say Cardiff, but again, he's not actually uh, in Wales. I wouldn't want to be recognised in Derby. He would be recognised on the streets of Cardiff, to be fair. Definitely. Um, So, have you, and this is another question that um, Ed actually pre-answered when I asked the question. Have you ever thought to pick up a rugby ball and play yourself? Has that ever been a dream or a desire? Um, I I like my head. You like your head, yeah, the whole yeah. concussion thing. And I also like my face. Okay. And we have that's that. positive so body as image. Much as, yeah, I've, as much as I've considered it, um, it would if it would wreck both my face and my brain, possibly, then I'm not sure if it, that's the idea that kind of puts me off the most. Because as much as I have been interested in the past, I definitely do not want concussion. Like, I'm already stupid enough as it is, so... <laughs> Well, you've got, I mean, we don't want to tell your life story, but I already know that you've got a, a decent science degree and, and other stuff. So I don't know if stupid's the right description, but yeah, sure. Play touch rugby. Touch rugby. Oh. touch rugby. Yeah, this is what we were talking about. Um, actually, CC brought it up in our chat the other day. He he doesn't want to necessarily play full contact rugby, but he's interested in touch. So maybe touch rugby is the route for a lot of people if they don't want to knock their heads and lose all their brain cells. Could I make my first tangent very briefly? Go on, let's tangent. Very I briefly. can't remember whether it was earlier on this year or at the end of last year, but touch rugby has its own World Cup. Yeah. Yeah? I yeah, think yeah. that's yeah. quite cool. It was a few There's months a ago, a couple of months ago. New, it's huge in New Zealand and Australia. Yeah, that's basically yeah, what so that's, that's, that's where I was going. Well, yeah, that's so it. is normal rugby. You're but quite right. That was, yeah, that, that's all I wanted to take not, hands not on in this Australia, time, but it's uh... well, yeah, this is Australia's really rugby union's dying a little bit. I mean, well, yeah, you can tell oh. by the stats at the last match that it's dying. Talk us through the stats, G. What happened? So New Zealand, Australia. What happened? Yeah. Basically, Australia only made sixty-seven percent of their tackles. So that's pretty shocking. It is but as you know, shocking. tackles and, um, don't matter. And they also won only thirty-eight percent of their lineouts. Yeah, that was all, that was so noticeable. It's like every other one they went up for, it was lost. Mm. But the only it was quite is, interesting. Yeah. Sorry, carry on. Well, no, I, just, I I saw a picture on uh, on Twitter about how slanted the lineouts lines were. How do you mean? So, well, the Kiwis, like the front of the Kiwi line, yeah. was basically their front guy was way in front of the Aussie back guy because it was all completely slanted, like right. at a de- like 35 degree angle almost. So if they lifted Brody Vitalik, yeah. he'd be in front of, no matter what, the Australian guy who was jumping against him. So it was easier for him to win the ball. I know we are, hate going down this route then, but that's got to be labelled. That's You've got to put that into that, some kind of, you know, some shocking officiating if both kind of, the referee if and the assistant referee. If you're the Australian hooker, why are you throwing the ball in? Yeah, well, that's, yeah. That's you need to tell the ref. So, did you notice where? Do you know where the the ref stands in lineouts? Well, they stands way back on the offside line, doesn't he? Yeah, but, um, only in professional when you've got an assistant referee. Then they yeah. do that. They they walk through the line and then go to yeah. the back. Um, a ref on it on on his own would stand in the in the hooker channel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's shocking. They've got such a great view. So you could you could. Like you could excuse an amateur ref, but not not one who has Wayne Barnes and I think two, Luke Pierce on the other side. Two people looking at it, and they both completely missed it. So that the stat, what was it, thirty eight percent? Did you say thirty six percent? They won five out of thirteen of their own lineouts. Gee, have you lost your recording? There was a problem with yeah. the network. 
Oh, well, you're what still happened? here, and if then? your audacity's running, then you'll be recording. Oh, well, I'm sure you can always cut that out. Sorry, I just... That's fine. No, we don't do any, any cutting. <laughs> no we no editing at all, sorry. It's <laughs> one continuous stream, and you have no choice but to just live with it. Yeah. So what what was the percentage of missed lineouts in the end? Sorry, I've forgotten. 38. No, they... Only, no they only made 38% of their lineouts. Yeah. So, oh, okay. So what percentage is that, Sav? Let, let him calculate. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's thirty-eight percent. Obviously, that's uh... oh, what of success? Sixty-two yes. percent success. Woo-hoo. Yeah. What about the no. neutral ones? No. When nothing no, no. happened, they won. Other way around. Sixty-two percent failure. Yeah. Sixty-two yeah, percent failure. Yeah. So yes. this, so this is the thing that um, I think even at amateur level, like the the very basic thing is you win your own yeah. set piece. Go on. You know that that's the most Did basic tenant of a rugby game. You I win your lost strum, You now. win your set piece. How can we lose Sav? He made the call. Um, I'm still here, according to my oh, right, own... Well... Okay. Can you not hear me? You were saying something and then you just flat out stopped. Yeah. This is... Okay, well, it, it'll be recorded on my end, so... But we don't know what you were saying, so how can we respond? <laughs> <laughs> just say yes. We could just, we could just stand back in awe. Just oh. plow, plow through. In Basically... silence. That was, that was a great gonna... opinion, Sav. Well done. That yeah. was phenomenal. phenomenal. Yeah, more of that. More of that. More of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what please, I was saying please. is basically that. I hope you didn't say anything racist. There was a comment. There was a comment on Twitter that said that Checker had made it overcomplicated. In what way? Made so, what overcomplicated? <sighs> just what? everything about the Australian game, and I think there's there's a small amount of truth to it. <sighs> Not because the Australians played in a really really complicated way. But because they didn't get like the basic things, the line out, the scrum, just all all the really simple, boring stuff that everybody should know as a professional, they well, didn't they, get that stuff right. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that whatever whatever game plan they had was too complex. You can be absolute shit at the line out and have a brilliant game plan. True. So it's like the defense the defensive setup from Australia in the first half was actually really good. And we we always get those comments like people analyze what that they say what the coaches have done but they have no idea what the word was or what the what the game plan was. That's, like, I mean that's we can't comment on we can't comment on that we can only comment on the outcome which is what we see which is the game. That's true. We can't comment there, there on the input because we don't know how good it is or how bad it is. There was is. another there was another bit of chat that was saying that. It, it it wouldn't make a difference like the mistakes that happened in the second half. The system. I th- I think that whatever Checker would have put out, Steve Hansen would have figured out, or New Zealand would have figured out how to beat it in the second half. So you would have almost had to have put two game plans into effect: something for the first half, something for the second half, and make sure that that I don't know could counter it. Because I I just think New Zealand are so good at adapting. You watched in the second half; they yeah. changed their attack and they completely blew away what was a good defensive system. Except well, that, that by reminds the end, it me of. A good oh, sorry, please go. At all. Exactly, it didn't. Yeah, it didn't work. The only person who really put in a stellar defensive um, masterclass this time was David Pocock. As and you know what's, uh, and you know what's funny? The, 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 the <coughs> third best def- the third best defender in the Australian team was Bernard Foley. Ooh. How? That's that's a mm, that's a sign that maybe things aren't going very well. No, I no. think that's a sign that your article on the stats shows that the stats don't tell you anything <laughs> because Bernard Foley wasn't defending very well. He made 13 tackles and only missed three. Only three? Yeah. That's missed... still quite yeah, a but lot. There's, no, there's people who missed five. Corrie oh, yeah, Corrib- Batty yeah. made five, missed five. Tolo Lato yeah, but... made two, Re- missed oh, four. Jesus. But think about, think about the system that Corrie Betty's in. Like, for example, the first tackle in the game was, was by Corrie Betty. Flying yeah. out of the line, smashing into Yuani. If he if he misses that tackle, it's not yeah. a try. Nothing happens. So it's yeah, but it's equally, a... I think Foley, Foley's positioning like he's in a that's a high traffic area. So yeah, maybe it's, it's easy it's to make It's especially a high traffic area because he's a target. But it's also a situation where you've got huge players running at you, so he's yeah. always losing yards, I suppose. So he's got. I mean, if you're a Italian and Simon Whitelock you, at training, they probably have. Poor old uh, Moanga wearing wearing a red bib or something, and <laughs> that him. says this that says this is Foley. Run at him. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I can imagine them. I can imagine them doing that quite easily and uh, attacking that ten channel horrendously. Because no matter who's in it, is it's <laughs> usually going to be a weaker tackler. You've got George Ford or Cipriani. We, we don't need George to open Ford that can of worms. Is, is not that bad. Like, obviously he's brave. I think, I think he's give brave. Him a rough and deal. He go, he's brave mm. and he goes. For it. The only oh, problem he's... is he's so little that even when he does tackle, it doesn't make that much of a difference. He's definitely he's definitely a brave tackler. He's one. He's one of those completionists. He will complete the tackle and he will make it. But yeah, you're right. He, even if he does do it, he will lose five, ten yards because the guy's just a couple of well, it's a foot taller than him in some cases, um, which is which is a huge issue for him. Um, so let's talk about England. Oh God! <laughs> All right, John. No, let's talk about Quinns. Oh God! But it's, can I just? It's. I. I want to point out. Yes. Uh, last. The last podcast you did with Squidge. You made, you know, a few jokes at my expense that I was constantly Always. bringing up England yeah. and Quinns, and that's all you did. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the hypocrisy it's... was rife. I wanted to bring up X too. I, I felt shot me so down. unfairly uh, <laughs> maligned during just listening to that podcast, as good as it was. It was very upsetting. I think we bring you up more than you bring Quinns up. Yeah, probably, that's, that's but possibly. not more than I bring up England. No. <laughs> Speaking of Marcus Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Can I bring up something that may be a potentially, uh, possibly controversial? Go on. But have you seen the the tackle of uh, Falau by Naholo? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Naholo I mean, trying to drive him into been, the ground. I've seen a fair amount of um, discussion about this, and I'm watching the replay now as well. Mm-hmm. And while it looks really bad, just you know, in isolation and from a distance, there's this. It's, Probably the first time I've noticed it in the set of comments, but there are a lot of people saying that um, Falau has sort of jumped into the tackle and tipped himself up. And the more I watch the replay of the tackle, I kind of get that feeling as well. And I think it's almost patently ridiculous to suggest that a player would deliberately get themselves into a position where they could be very badly hurt by getting tackled, you know, illegally or improperly. But it, watching it, it genuinely Falau's... looks like Falau has lifted himself up and kind of propelled himself into a more dangerous position. Well, as a, he's definitely as not a light... jumped in, but he has yeah. wiggled in the air to try and do something. But he's obviously get... not trying to get a penalty. He's not trying to milk anything. Um, no. Because God will take care of whatever he needs. <laughs> He's trying to change his momentum. But no, that's but that's. I mean, again, I, Naholo seems just freakishly fucking strong, and he gives him a massive hit. But and yeah. I do, I am fully aware of the fact that you know a tackler has a duty of care on the ball carrier to bring him down to the ground safely. But mm-hmm. I feel like Falau completely takes that away from him by Honestly, I feel the like... movement he makes. I feel like he put him down as safely as he possibly could in that situation. Well, yeah, so do I. Well, I think he slowed well, him. No. Down. He put him down slowly enough that. Falau had enough time to put his arms down and save himself. Um, I don't, I don't feel know, like he drove him to the ground or anything like that. No, no, no. He definitely, he definitely didn't. He did actually drive him up for like about half a second and then stopped once Falau was wiggling and sort of brought him down a bit, a bit slower. So I, I think, think it was he... actually the right decision. Penalty for yeah. lifting, that's, that's, and then that's kind of circumstances. Of but I think you know, it's a really fine only... line because I, it genuinely looks, the more I watch it, and I've watched it a few, I mean, the the loop is only a couple of seconds. I've watched it go yeah. over a few dozen times, I would imagine. I'm but watching it, just, it right now. It, maybe I'm now reading more into it because of that's where my head has gone, but it just looks like he's... I, I... He's trying to make it look worse than it was going to be, or he's trying I to... Think, I think he... No, because I I, I've been in that situation as a, a, a lighter fly half kind of person you you do get lifted and as you get lifted the only movement because you you can't change your momentum in any way once you start being lifted the only thing you can do is kind of push off the ground with your feet that's the only momentum change that you can give but that's what he does but he does it in such a way whereby um when he gets hit and his right leg is sort of parallel to the ground and he gives a good shove off with his left, and his left ends up being f- higher up um, than yeah. his right. But but this is all instinct. Yeah. If, if you're going to be tackled, it, there's no thought. I, I I can tell you now, if you're being hit at that speed and being lifted, yeah. you're you're just trying to. 
it's it's almost like you've fallen off a cliff and you're just trying to cling or change anything yeah, in your momentum. Yeah, I mean, it, and, and there's there's no thought going into it. Might it. Have been so, I, I, reading one comment like got a hook into my brain or something. So as I say, maybe controversial. It may just be a really fucking stupid opinion to have, but it's just sort of <laughs> that's kind of where I've come down on it at the moment. And I, I I have said even when I commented that it's a ridiculous opinion to have because. I don't think any player would deliberately put themselves into a position whereby they can actually be seriously or grievously harmed. But no, yeah, that thing didn't mean to do that. By the yeah. way, yeah, we apologise to all of our listeners. CC Squidge, we're sorry. <laughs> you think Squidge well, is still going to be listening to this? That's great. He doesn't that's care. That's positive. He's too big for us. <laughs> Let's just be hopeful. Um, so I mean, should we talk about Argentina, we, South Africa? We talk- I only watched. I so I watched the highlights for Argentina because I haven't even watched was, that much. There was a lot of people being extremely negative about Argentina. Like I've never seen this much negativity. It's like people expected them to, I don't know, win. Do you have I don't a, know what they were expecting. I have a broad idea good. of which people, because um, quite a lot of people on Twitter. So, so I mean, there's no way necessarily... of like, gauging nationality or anything like that. I'm going to say um, this now. I, when I, when I predicted that Wales would win 2 0 versus Argentina, most people called me an idiot. Yeah, yeah people well, are that's dicks, <laughs> I was I was just going to call you an idiot. I realised you're our guest. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely hope I wasn't one of those because I don't think I would have said that. But No, I, I, I can't remember who it honest, was, but what, I did have a lot of people think I was being ridiculous for believing that. And I was you know right, what it is? Argentina it's... were di- diabolical that time. Mm. Yeah. Argentina are rubbish at that period of the they year, were. to be fair. They, they were. Got, I mean, yeah. And I think they were better I'm, than I'm that surprised. yesterday, but yesterday, I mean, but I still don't think they were that great. Yeah, it's, yeah. they kind of, they, I mean, they suffer in the summer. They do, or they can and do fairly well in the autumn. They excel at the World Cup. It's just no, they do, they're all, they do awful at the autumn. Well, they awful. they don't do anything. Autumn autumn well, is when they lost to the, the French. Summer. Wait, no, they beat the French, didn't they? It, like I, the French C team. But we something? have a problem with we have a problem yeah, was, with, um, what was with it? Argentina. Not, uh, lo- oh, do you? Yeah, I think last year there was a. Argentina. I can't remember. Is it a racist? Thing? <laughs> no, I think they. Um, it might, I don't know what it is, but they they know how to piss off the French. It's last summer. There was a score of twenty seven nil, though I can't remember who scored which. I uh, know Fran- France won twenty seven nil. Twenty seven. Yeah, in what that's... language do they ref the Argentinian uh, French games? Um, in English, I think. English. Okay. All tier one. So I'm not sure, aren't they? Uh, I was having this discussion, and I, I do really want some more, not necessarily bilingual, but some more. You like, want an Argentinian on the pod? <laughs> not on the pod as referees. I, I want the. Someone to because imagine if England played against Argentina and it was a Spanish ref. Yeah. How annoyed would the RFU be? Would, How annoyed would, would the whole of England RFU be? I've been they, using they, Duolingo they, for four days in a row. So <laughs> fucking smashing me. Eddie Jones would be putting in complaints before the game even started. RFU would want the match but, cooled off. Exactly. I mean, this is the thing. It like, wasn't rugby, mate. It's madness. And Argentina have to deal with this, and France have to deal with this every single time they play with Wayne Barnes or Nigel well, Owens. Wayne Barnes right? knows. How, Wayne Barnes has learned a lot of French for that reason, yeah. so that he can do you know yeah. the better job when he's, refereeing them. He's good. He's good with. Is that. he? Fair play yeah. to him. Fair play to him. I could say either way, but you know, it's good that he's done that because I know that there's. I mean, there are one or two other refs that have done it, but. They are very few and far between as far N- as I Nigel know. Owens should ref in Welsh. I was I was just about to say that, G. What what, what would you like people to ref in, in Welsh? I mean, a lot of people in Wales don't speak Welsh, so I'm not sure. That's their own problem, though, isn't it? Yeah. That adds some entertainment their... value. That would add a, an entertainment value. Broken Wales, that's what it is. I mean, I'd like him to say, like, boys back a bit more. And... What does that mean? Like little boys. Oh, right. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't, does, there... I don't know why it sounds weird when you say it in English, actually. But saying "boys back" is really normal in in Wales. But when I say "oh yeah," it means little boys. That just makes it sound really weird and creepy. It's a, li- I, it's I, a little bit creepy. I can. <laughs> I don't know. I can. Nigel Owens did say "quatch" once. Say what? Quatch. 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 It's quatch. spelt with a W, quatch. but it said. Quatch. Yeah. Quatch. No, I mean, quatch. it's said "quatch." Quatch. It's like cu- quatch. 
Good God. This is, I, 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 could, I could believe, I, could, I, I can imagine Nigel Owen saying something like that, because when Scarlet played whoever the fuck it was they played however many years ago, where he called in like all 30 players on the pitch to have a chat to, that, that feels like a kind of time where he would, you know. No, no, boys, Bach. Yeah. I, I, can, I can see that happening, I suppose. That makes sense in my head anyway. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's... I, th- if I, I suppose, I mean, how? because uh, I know some, a fair few, but not all of the Welsh players do speak Welsh. But it would be quite interesting, I suppose, if every now and again you heard the refs actually speaking to them in... Uh, although considering the primary language is English, why would they do something that's slightly more difficult? I don't know. Mm. I'm random. I mean, if they if they if it's they're known to be a Welsh speaker, then maybe he would on occasion. But I think they should. Plenty oh, of sorry. Welsh players who can't speak Welsh, then it probably wouldn't make sense. I just personally, I think it's quite surprising that um, shall we say international games can be refed by someone who doesn't speak like the can't speak directly so if you have at the world cup one of the players on the page yeah if you get to the world cup you could have like japan versus (laughs) namibia or something yeah and then um do we probably have international refs that can speak japanese we probably have international refs that will speak namibian i don't actually know what namibia do they they not speak afrikaans yeah that's what i was gonna say i just i just hope they don't speak english and i suddenly sound like a really really bad racist um (laughs) They probably do speak a bit of English, just like South Well, Africans yeah, but I, I mean as a primary language, I suppose, which they might still, and I might still be sounding more racist, who knows. <laughs> Tell me another country. Georgia. They must speak... Hello. Uh... How are you doing? <laughs> Russia. She, she's a, when she's when, a when Russia plays Japan, you know... Oh, it's... God, I know I've put weight, guys, oh. but that's offensive. No, I think I think we should have the Six Nations reft exclusively in Afrikaans and Maori. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was that. I want it um, ref in Pikey. Legends. There was that. That's not Will. <laughs> There's a legend of Paul O'Connell learning Afrikaans so that he no, knows it's, the line. No, that's not Paul O'Connell. That's our World Cup team from 2003. That's. Did they do that as well? It, I, I thought, thought it was a line. Ben K, it's Ben K or. Um, no, it's the other one. Yeah, but I can't remember which one is. Uh, Martin Johnson. I, was it Johnson? I thought it was. I, I thought it was Martin Johnson. I don't think it was Johnson. But anyway, just, which I which is the Paul least dumb of all of, of all of your locks? I think it was Paul O'Connell, guys. I don't think. No, no, no. I'm I'm fair. I am positive. Positive. It was our the 2003 England team that did it. I I've never heard that. Uh, I thought it was a Lions team that went to South Africa. I thought it was the 97 Lions. I thought it, either way yeah. we should all. I I just I don't know. I, I just get frustrated when... So, say a referee is shouting, get back, get back, offside, offside, yeah. to a French team or to an Argentinian team. It just feels incredibly unfair. Yeah. And this, I mean, like I'm looking even like at, thinking, the, at the bottom of a ruck, if a player is holding onto the ball and being yelled at to let go, if it's not his native language and it's being, you know, number 10, let go, number 10, let go, he might... Honestly, with it's, colours, for it's instance, fine. You, they, you learn pretty quickly, like... You've got. They're going to train. They're international players. They're professionals. They're going to. Yeah. They're going to be mm. trained Sav's, to know. Yeah, Sav's making them all things. sound like they're morons. It's a bit harder for the captain. No, no, no. To but I imagine if influence. someone yelled um, ten, let go to me in French, I, I would understand it. But it's not. <laughs> are you so are you saying you've ever done a jackal? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, but the reaction speed that you might need to actually comply might be interrupted by the fact that you have to translate, if you know what I mean. I guess so, but if you're I'm talking sure about reaction speed, like, I don't know. Just I, look think, at the I, I think they're smarter than you're giving them uh, yeah. credit for. I just don't think they speak That's any That's how many concussions they've had, Joe. Well, yeah, fair. <laughs> yeah. It's it's odd calling uh, George North is going to struggle. <laughs> yeah, I was going to I was I was trying to find something yeah. about George North. Yeah, oh, every God. other concussion he speaks French. <laughs> oh no, he'll he'll only know Welsh soon. <laughs> Did he turn down a, a French contract at any point? Probably. Um, I don't no know. idea. He must. Have I'm going to go with yes. There's no way Northampton's your first I choice. Back <laughs> <laughs> Well, currently, but when when he sorry, I, just, he, I love hating on. I thought Hampton they were good when he like went it's there. It's a team that's really safe to hate on. Oh, well, at least one, like, then, at least one team in England will finally appreciate Dan Bigger, anyway. 
yeah, well, well, yeah, eventually. He looks really bad in Northampton Colours. Yeah, but most people look bad in those Northampton Colours. I haven't actually seen it, but Colours. apparently, but apparently he played quite well, but I haven't seen it doesn't anything. Suit, doesn't, are, you, are you a bigger fan? I, I, am, I am quite fan, fan, a big fan of Bigger. I wouldn't say, he's my, f- I wouldn't say he's my favourite half fly half, but he's, a, he's very good, and I think he's underappreciated by a lot of non-Welsh people. I think Welsh people like <laughs> understand how good he is, but it's almost, I think I a will lot say, of non-Welsh people don't. I would imagine it's less to do with his playing ability, and it comes almost entirely down to his on-field uh, demeanour, I suspect. I mean, oh, no, absolutely. So it's, yeah, yeah, I mean, I was, during, during the Lions tour, I did full-on come round to the idea that he should probably be starting more games. But he, he, he still has a few moments that stand out to me as some of the most annoying things I've ever seen a professional rugby player do on a pitch. Yeah, but um, have you seen the Farrell creepy stare? I don't... There's nothing wrong with that. He's just lining up the posts. It's a, like it's it's, a little bit terrifying. T- it's terrifying. And you, you don't think Dan Bigger have some sort of epileptic fit lining up the posts is any less sort of... Well, I know he just strokes himself down. <laughs> <isn't he? laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Just saying. It, it, it literally I just think he's trying to hold down. on his piss before the end of the game. <laughs> what? Because he's yeah. standing still for so long. <clears throat> his his stats are ridiculously good. I think it's only Sexton who has better kicking off the tee stats than him. Uh, maybe Morgan Parra. I don't know if it's think... Morgan Parra, but it, it depends. is it like a minimum amount of um, kicks taken before we? You know, count yeah, I, I, I mean, I, li- I like at least 200 to have happened because yeah. it's because otherwise uh, Hernandez is like number one and he's like 120 something kicks. Jenkins is very, very good, but he's, you know, taken about as many as Wilkinson missed in his career. So it's it's there. are Oh, Jenkins has taken like 380 something and Wilkinson took 1700. How many did so. he miss? Like 200 or so or? No, oh, I don't know. I'd have to get but, it in front yeah, of me. The, I mean, I mean the, the, the amount Wilkinson missed is about the same as Jenkins ever took. Yeah, see, that's one of the reasons in the game I think it's absolutely yeah. pointless showing them showing the percentage. So they did that for Barrett. They were like, oh, he's kicks zero out of one, zero percent. <laughs> what, what is that like? How is that an interesting... Zero out of one is an interesting stat. Zero percent is completely yeah. meaningless. It gets interesting once you get to about, like, six kicks, though. Yeah, but even yeah. then... You, I suppose, you know, I mean, if you look at it when, uh, just to make it, it's a relevant tangent, but when England played Wales in summer of 2016, George Ford had eight kicks and I think only made one. So I suppose a percentage attached to that would have been. Yeah, it's still <laughs> more interesting. Actually, like comparable to yours, even though you absolutely battered us. And yeah. it was just because was George game, Ford missed awesome. like seven kicks. Yeah. I think it's more interesting to that... see one out of eight than 12.5%. Well, maybe. Uh, yeah, I suppose that makes more sense. Like the percentage, I only like the percentages when you've got a huge yeah. volume. Otherwise, of kicks. it's not interesting in a game. It's not interesting. Yeah, that. I mean, that's true. <laughs> um, I'd be, I'd be interested to know how, how the backroom staff. I really want to know how backroom staff treats those sorts of stats because they're probably interested in like the percentages but they're probably more just interested in what's the weak what, side and what's the strong percentages side. in general or specifically referring to kicking at the moment just because i Kick, very kicking, briefly had in my head the idea that you know after a game johnny wilkinson comes up to george ford and says i'm not angry i'm just disappointed <laughs> um but you know that's i, oh, I can see I, that happening that i think i think he i think Johnny Wilkinson could break George Ford <laughs> mentally if, if he did that. Because I'm 100% sure that Ford looks up to, um, to Wilco quite high. Who highly. doesn't? And, if, and if, Wilco, if Wilco genuinely was at the end of a game in the tunnel as Ford missed 7 out of 8 or, you know, whatever, that would break but it. Way, that would be horrible. If in some far-off distant dreamland I made sort of, you know, Johnny Wilkinson walk past me at a park at the exact moment that I was attempting a drop kick which I absolutely cannot do because the idea of you know getting it to bounce and then I can't do it and so I'd shank it or hoof it into the distance or whatever one single kick taken in isolation if he said something like that to me I'd probably cry <laughs> <laughs> oh dear so, so who's kick- sorry carry on what were you going to say yeah, go, go for it G go for it G no, I was just thinking going back to the um, the old the overall like lifetime kicking percentages I was quite surprised that mm-hmm. Sexton's was so high because when, when I was watching him growing up, I always thought Rowan O'Gara was a much better kicker. 
And when I watch him, mm-hmm. like like in more recent times, he always seems to have this one place, one blind spot where he just misses everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I it's. I, I mean, is it Harble brought up that he's got this blind spot and Sexton can't kick from this one specific oh, position? And there was G um, earlier on saying that you know that yeah, yeah. she she didn't look at rugby with an analytical point of view, and she's just you know she nailed it. She a hunt. From from years years gone by, she's been watching it. Ogara freaks me out a bit because everybody talks about his kicking, and when I looked at his percentages, they're okay, but they're not like. It's just what I'm what I remember from my childhood. Yeah. Well, maybe they talk about his kicking to avoid talking about his tackling. <laughs> <laughs> well, he tackled those fists with his face on the Lions tour quite yeah. well. <laughs> so what is Sexton? Rough. That's rough. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. I, feel, I, I, I feel, don't think I can see him ever be like, "Oh yeah, I'm going to coach the Waratahs now," just because of that. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I, I imagine he if the did the Crusaders smash the Tars. No, it was the Canes that beat them, wasn't it? I think everyone smashed. Either the Tars. I mean, everybody smashed the Tars. But to be honest with you, I'm I'm really happy for Ogara. His coaching has gone really, really well. He's gone from France down to New Zealand, yeah. and it's all gone. Really and he's well gone for to him. Crusaders. I mean, he didn't go. Uh, he didn't go to Blues. He didn't go to the Blues. Because he's not, he's not true, crazy. Actually. Imagine you got offered a job at the Blues, though. Do you, I mean, that must be rough. The opportunity is huge, but also you know that it's you're probably not going to come away with a successful season. Mm. It must be the toughest job in the world. I like how this applies to both Cardiff and Auckland. Ouch. Excuse me, we, we did well last year. <laughs> See, when you say Blues, you, no one I, thinks of Cardiff. Where did, you, where, did the, where did Cardiff Blues come last year? Um, I think we made. I, I, I know, we, know we got automatic qualification into the Champions Cup, and that was even before winning the Challenge okay. Cup. So that's an okay season. I think we um, got let down by the fact that we had a really dreadful start, but by the end we were quite decent. Okay. I have no right I, to I've throw not... any shade, by the way. Coming, you know, as a Harlequin fan, I just you know. Quin, Quins came third from it bottom. It was a funny I mean, joke. Yeah, we did better with than Quins at least. So that... Yeah, well, I it wasn't difficult, that. was it? We were shite. Also, pre-season, Exeter did know, just beat. Do you want to hear pre-season? Cardiff. We've just gone. Sm- uh, what was it? Glasgow, I think. Harlequins played. Final Glasgow score was fifty you. points to thirteen or something. It was fifty-seven, fourteen. Just embarrassing. I know it's pre-season. Like, we had and like... you played. By the way, you played quite a strong team. Did we? Jesus. That's... It wasn't like you. But I wouldn't say it was your best. Like Rob Shaw, Marla, Sinclair, they weren't playing. If, if my prediction but... from I think the year before, like well, maybe the beginning of last year, holds, this is the season where we end up fighting for relegation. Um, because we came close last season, so I think this is the one where we, you know, we we seal the deal. So, given the um... Harlequins are like very bad, why did so many of their players get picked for England? Uh, they just because have, they just yes, have, like, a excellent question. No, no, it's it because like the player. <laughs> The Feels players like that have, been... have a lot of like, good individuals, but most they... of those players are a holdover from when we won the Premiership. Players like Mike Brown, Danny Kerr, Joe Marler, they have mm. been England stalwarts from when Harlequins were actually, you know, were a good team. Uh, so the few newer players that you have coming through, like um, Kyle Sinclair, who is a Test Lion, has mm. you know Charlie something Matthews. positive about him. But then you've got lots of shit in the middle, and you've got the whole issue we have with Hooker and Seven, which is the same person. It's you know. Uh, no, I'm I'm gonna go with G. Go on then. I I actually think there is a bit of a uh, a Harlequins bias, now, and I agree with the whole. I mean, I suspect I, I don't disagree. I'm no, just you know, trying to give some explanation to it. I'm just wondering if there's a, they just have they, like there's a, a lot, lot of very they amazing are, individuals. Of they just don't gel as a team. If you get me. They are unfairly represented. I think not. That might not be the right way to put it because I don't think they don't deserve selection. But I suppose if you were to look at it, yeah, you know, think... on a basis of selection based on table position, there is a staggering number compared to what you might think were you to look at it just from a numbers point of view. But you can't always take that because, again, the stats don't always give the whole story. Yeah. You, you um, look at what Gatlin did with the Scarlets. He's gone, oh, they're really good. Let's pick some of them. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is, wait. Isn't is that entirely down well. to what Rob Howley did for them? <laughs> oh, entirely. <laughs> He... Absolutely. <laughs> Rob ha- Rob Howley is. I, I mean, he's the architect. Exactly. <laughs> he uh, he went down to the rugby club and he said, "Look, this is the style I want you to play." And then Scarlet's one and one, so th- it's all it's all down to him. Absolutely. Um, no, but but I think Gatlin's been more responsive than the RFU and certainly the English selectors because 
why why were we still picking these Harlequins players that were clearly not in a good mindset and not doing very well mm. when we've got really good like, there's I, so actually, many other teams gonna, that were doing really well yeah. even Newcastle players Newcastle have been performing been outperforming Harlequins for a long time I'll take time back now. what I said maybe it is then that, I mean Eddie does have favourites um, so but I don't think it's Eddie I think I think there's a big I, I think big, there's a lot of it that is I think it. that maybe but the Quins Quins are very much like England rugby like yeah. the Qu- Quins and England rugby they're, they're what they're the, they're 800, 800 metres they're less than a kilometre away ish from much much less than HQ. Yeah. So it, I mean it's, it is the it's the club equivalent of the old boys club isn't it so it's but like, a little bit yeah it, the thing is though, we've got the same thing with Cardiff Blues and actual Wales because they play like right next to each other but we don't have like a, a massive like over representation of our team in the team. In fact, we probably That's have under representation. Shit. But, <laughs> but there's a less. I'm... I think there's less. Of, there's, there's less of a. How can I say? Like a corporate structure. There, there will be a corporate structure, obviously. Mm. But but it just feels like the whole RFU is set up on this old boys posh club. Whereas everyone in everyone who talks about Welsh rugby seems to think that it's the people's game as much as it is the expensive people. You know, like big mm. money. So, so I think maybe there's a lot of a hangover still in rugby where it's there's a lot of money. Harlequins have a lot of money. There's a lot of money in the academy. There's a lot of posh schools in that area that feed into the Harlequins Academy. Our boy, he, he should be playing for Quins. Get him in, get him in, these sorts of things. Um, and, and I think there's a lot of that still going on at, at Quins. To be fair, there are a few. I can't think of many Harlequins players who have you know been selected for England and been immediately crap. Because I think a lot of the problems we've had, certainly recently, so is, is it, just what about Yard? Because Yard, Yard is, he started crap. London Irish though, so that doesn't count. Um, <laughs> because my my um, point was going to be that it sort of comes down to if you look at the, I mean, granted, take this with a pinch of salt because it's n- clearly not happening across the entire team and across all clubs, but just the amount of player burnout over the last two seasons or so, um, or since the last World Cup anyway. I suppose that doesn't really hold water because I can't really think of too many Harlequins that went on the Lions tour, though. Just um, Sinclair. Yeah. He's pretty fucking uh, good, d- though, so, you know, that's all right. Sin- Sinclair, Sinclair is quality, sink. to be fair. Don't, and he loves don't dinosaurs, what? and that's never <laughs> a bad thing. <laughs> Gee, I don't think that was a saying. Uh, don't, can we rewind that? I don't don't I sink the sink. Don't sink the sink. Don't don't sink the sink. There's got to be something like don't unplug the sink or something like this. No, don't I like sink. how we're talking this about sink now. Like Sinclair, come on. Okay, okay, we'll go with come that. Come on, Sav, honestly. Um, I always used to say that don't sink the sink. How have I we're, not? We're making it a I thing. Have... If it, if it wasn't already, I've unoffi- I've unofficially I'm sure it was a thing. I, I thought it was a thing like all about for all throughout the lions. Probably like was. I just might, it might have been. I have no memory of any of that uh, tour anymore. It's all just you know, it was so Did long you ago. Any concussions, Joe? No, my memory's just gone to shit. That's all. Old man. Too many. Um, too many Capri Suns. I've not had a Capri Sun in eight. I could murder a Capri Sun right now. <laughs> it's going hard. Capri on the Sun sponsor the German team. That's pretty cool. I think. What's that? G- uh, Capri Sun sponsor the German team. Do they? I think so. No, they sponsor Stade uh, Francais. They... So the owner of the oh. owner of Stade Francais and whatever that German team is the owner of Capri Sun. He's a Swiss oh, billionaire. Okay. And there was this I thing about the um, Parise, just like leading a, a Capri Sun advert. <laughs> I'd watch that. I'd buy more Capri Sun. Squirting juice yeah. down his. But uh, apart from that, it is like about the rugby, right? Dabs, just like. <laughs> <laughs> what a what an advert that would be! What a mental picture. You're telling me that's, you wouldn't love that's it. Pretty... You're wrong. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I think I think Ed would be buying a lot more Capri Suns. <laughs> It'd be worth it. Um, so, would you buy the Stad Francais think, calendar like, if they had Capri Suns on it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only thing they're covering themselves with is Capri Sun, not a rugby ball. Like <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a bit sticky. It's, it's I wouldn't buy one, but to catch it. I, I wouldn't buy one, but I probably expect to receive one as a uh, as a gift. But you know, as a joke, quote unquote, gift. So we're talking. We're talking about sponsors. We're talking about. Um, Have you seen the Scarlet <laughs> drinks, shirt? Apparently, yes. We're going to talk about the Scarlet all shirt. All sponsors. It's you know the article that you I think CC did for for Line Break um, back when we actually did stuff for the website 
about yes. uh, away shirts and how they should, you know, mm -hmm. not be boring and white and they should do something interesting. Um, yeah, 100%. Uh, what card, what uh, Scarlet's have done is taken the worst of both worlds, whereby their shirt is white, but they have covered it entirely in sponsors and ads, and it looks ridiculous. Half of it looks like a Leinster jersey because it's covered in harps. Um, yeah, what's that about? I have no idea. Gee, have you got any idea why Scarlet's might have put harp, uh, harps on their I mean, jerseys? Harps are kind of Welshy, I guess, but that's the only thing I could think of. Don't tell Harbs that. Harps. I, I just thought it was all Guinness. Here. Yeah. I don't know. It, I it thought it was kind of a Guinness. I don't know. There's thing. a lot. There's a lot of harpy kind of um, music in Wales. Like, I remember when I was growing up at school, okay. I'd, I'd learnt harp briefly, like for a year. I couldn't play it for really? shit now. Yeah, I was I was like okay. eleven. Okay. <laughs> yes, no, that's so then, quite that's so interesting. Something... Kind of cool. It's quite, I don't know if it's quite prominent in Wales in general. Either though, just in my school. Or... But yeah, there are I a just lot kind of like of... harp lessons off offered, and I can't really imagine that being a thing in England. So my my issue is not with the sponsors per se. It's what it's the, the there's a color scheme that's terrible. It's it's kind of a clown. There's a blue, yellow, white, and red thing going on. It looked literally the picture the picture a clown, and then they've just thrown it at a shirt. <laughs> And then, and then the sponsor, the sponsors. There's not the issue with the volume of them because yeah, they just want more money. That's the idea. It's just the fact that none of them seem to go very well with the shirt. Mm. It doesn't like if you if you're gonna put a sponsorship on something, I feel like it needs to make it stylish or at least not ruin the style because the point is you want people to buy the shirt so more people see the shirt or you want them to play with the shirt. And, and maybe it's want, I don't maybe know, it's sort of to uh, what's the right word to put it? You know, like you know how movies have something called counter counter programming. So when Star Wars gets released, like a comedy developer will release some comedy so that it releases at the same time, and then all the overflow goes to there. Maybe it's in a similar way. Maybe they've released such a shit shirt that <laughs> everyone buys the home shirt instead, <coughs> and they boost it. Have you seen way. the um, the Glasgow ones? I was uh, the, yeah the yeah big yeah, green the big square. Green square. Like, because like the away the away um the away kit is actually like without that green bit it'd be really nice but then that just just ruins it and then even the home kit's not yeah. great it just has a weird tartan stripe across the front and there's many wait cool what's this ways green square on the um the Glasgow away away kit this season so the midriff yeah on their midriff it's, like, it's, it's just right a big screen chest. square with words on it I can't and find it, it just seems to completely thing. like clash with the re whole rest of um. The shirt. And, and like you said, the the style of it's really nice. So that's a nice shirt. You it's just can that tell green it's a nice thing shirt. Just ruins it. Yeah. So for me, if I'm a sponsor, yeah, you want your sponsorship to stand out in some way. But it should it should make the shirt better. If you're gonna put your sponsorship on something, it should make the shirt better rather than just completely ruin any style that's happened. And I think that's something that I don't know sponsorships, PR firms, whatever you want to call it, could get better at because at the moment we've got rubbish sponsors that are just look rubbish and people. I don't know what the sponsors on the Scarlet shirt <coughs> are. Do you know what I mean? But it it hasn't terrible. helped me the fact that <laughs> yeah, I've I've seen that shirt a million times, looked at it and said that looks rubbish, but I don't know who the sponsors are. So do you want to hear something they really bad? Anything to me? The first time I saw the shirt, the scar, it's. The, the Scarlet's logo, especially because of where it's... Wait, I uh, made them think of a different shirt. It looks like the Scarlet's logo is just another sponsor. It looks like it has nothing to do with the shirt. I am... What I was... I have gotten confused, though, so I'll come back around to it in a second. Yeah, with the amount of logos on it, there's no yep. indication of who the team is because the Scarlet's logo looks like any of the other symbols <laughs> on there. But I have just yeah. been reminded, I think it might have been... I want to say Racing 90... Whatever they are now. Racing. 92, they haven't it's, changed the number, that's where they're from. No, yeah, sorry, it's, they're, they're one of their most, I think their most recent shirt, yeah. the Racing logo is about where the left hip is. Oh yeah, I've okay. seen something like that, it was really shit, let me find because, it. Oh, so you can't even tell the team? No, because, because, because the, the chest is covered in sponsors and logos. Uh, see, th there's been, okay, so, I mean, G's on Twitter quite a lot as well, mm -hmm. I don't know about you two. But yeah. I've just seen a lot of people going, I don't care what the sponsor is, like, we're going to win and it doesn't matter. Well, I'm, nev Fine. I'm never really bothered by you, the sponsor. You've got, it's... you've got, like, sponsors and you're going to win, so you've got more money and all of this sort of thing. But part of the reason that my... And this is someone who's not, like, crazy for rugby. Well, not, no, he is crazy for rugby, but he's not crazy for buying shirts. 
But my, my granddad loves the pink extra shirt. He thinks it's absolutely amazing. He loves it to bits. Yeah. And it's it's not you know a good looking shirt. But if that was covered in sponsors, I don't think he'd buy it. That's fair. So and and this is someone who's played for extra, lived in extra, all this nonsense. But he just really loves that shirt. So if you make good shirts, they do sell. So that, and the point of a shirt is to sell the shirt. Otherwise, like you wouldn't shirt. have. You know, speaking. Exa- I mean, speaking of exactly. So in that same you know, vein, there is a problem. I often wonder why it's so, why Argentina never really sell their shirts over here because they are the most amazing shirts, and I want one. They're gorgeous. It's been, I mean, their most recent shirt for the 2018 and 19 season. The away shirt is again awesome with a nice splash of orange, and the home shirt is as classic as it ever is, just with a bit more of a, a flourish inside the actual hoops. But it looks. I, I don't get why they don't sell those more readily over here. Because they're amazing, because yeah. I, I really want one. I, I mean, I, I love, I've got my my Japanese um, blo- cherry blossom one, I hate which is this. brilliant. I wish I I'd it. bought one of those. It's such a good shirt. It's, I actually, I've played t- um, touch, I've played touch rugby with it. Yeah. I've played, it's just brilliant. I love it. I mean, it. There, there are a couple of shirts. I mean, I'm fairly sure they actually still have the exact same style, so I could buy one. I just wish I'd bought one of the World Cup ones because it doesn't have a sponsor. Um, did did everybody get the ten pound lions shirt? Yeah, I, got I that. already. Yeah, I, I, did. I, I didn't because I, I had the. I think, but I don't know. Or was it a five? When I it was out, cheap. Might be the ten or five. I can't really remember. It was cheap. G, 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 G's, G's getting a fiver. I don't know how she's got away with that. I uh, I I, I, I got one. given when I left uh, the job I had uh, in halfway through 2013. One of my going away presents was a 2013 lions shirt, and so I figure I don't need another one. So, someone from the rugby too many club. Shirts. I, Sorry, carry on. Well, yeah, someone I, from I, the rugby club just gave me. I one. agree to an extent, but the I, at the moment I have, uh, I have an England home shirt, an England away shirt. I have a New Zealand shirt. I've got an Australia shirt, um, and I've got a Harlequins away shirt. And so there are a few more that I'd like to get. The one, the ones I'm annoyed that I missed out on are the uh, Japan's World Cup shirt from three years ago, the mm-hmm. the Australia's. Aboriginal one from last year, oh, which amazing, yeah. I would pay good money. So for that. so good, and it's a good I think shirt. George Gregan said that he'd like to see them have one of those every year or have that as their standard shirt. I thought it was Royal Guinea who said that. Uh, I think it was Guinea. Oh, Guinea. Yeah, Guinea Why did I think that. Gregan? I might be being slightly racist again. Then shit. No, um, again, what again? Well, scrum it's, half. It's a yeah. It's a G. It's a scrum yeah. half. And then the other one is the one from Harlequin's 150th anniversary, which was just. I didn't like that one, but I know it's you a have no opinion. taste, so you know it doesn't matter. It's, <laughs> yeah, not a big. It, it was the. It was such a good-looking shirt, and the promo picture for their for the club season as well was brilliant, with all of them wearing it, looking like they'd stepped out of like you know, the uh, the end of the 19th century. I still think the Cardiff Blues pink shirt is the best shirt, but I might be a little biased. I do quite like. I'm that. gonna have to look up the, the Cardiff Blues pink. The one. pink and black. Yeah, that's the one I have. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Leicester's done a pretty good shirt this year. It's it's fairly oh, standard that pink for and Leicester. Black is nice. Yeah, but then you have to watch Leicester. Well, that's true. Oh, they did they win? Did they win the Euro <laughs> Cup wearing that? Don't know. Euro Cup. Is that is the Cardiff Blues? The Cardiff Blues pink and black shirt. Did they no, win the? No, um, they did. They played in blue in the they final. They were doing. Did he play in oh no! They played yellow? in the they played in the horrible blue and yellow one. Oh, is it that one? I know, I know. Yeah, it's I one for Owen Williams. Blue and yellow, Williams, one. Blue and yellow it's one horrendous. Was Wasn't the blue and yellow one as a, a charitable thing for one yeah, of their players? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yes, Owen oh, Williams. And that he, was um, the, he got paralyzed got during tackled the match. and yeah. Oh, but now I feel terrible for saying it. Looks it does look horrendous. People thought it was that okay thing when when it wasn't. Edinburgh's got a new logo. Yeah, they've they? become. Um, I've just seen their shirt. They've gone this orange that? and purplish. It's well, who who would you call it? Had to rebrand their Bristol? Uh, the big Twitter account. Oh no, Lions. Red and Black. Oh, I've got no idea. Oh, He's right. had to rebrand himself. I was just thinking about the other ones that have done it. Bristol are now Bears. Gloucester are now Lions. No, Gloucester aren't Lions, but they have a Lion logo. Oh right, gotcha. Oh, I think they were going to rebrand. Sorry. I'm confusing them with the South African Lions, who wear the exact same shirt. <laughs> well, to be fair, Gloucester, Gloucester have imported a fair few. Um, well, South African like core. I wouldn't well, they, say a fair few, they, but they've got they've got a little. They've core imported players and the coach. Yeah, from the Lions. They've got a little South African core. If uh, if we want to hate on Northampton some more, their their shirt this season is another shocker. 
Oh, just everything. I don't know why, but Northampton are so easy to attack at the moment. Northampton and Quinns, but Northampton's shirt. <laughs> Bigger looks bad in it. Bigger, Bigger's a, not, a decent looking bloke, and he looks so bad in a Northampton you look shirt. Like such a I think... at, least, at the very least, in that picture, he doesn't look as bad as Tamana Harrison, who looks like a massive knob. I mean, <laughs> That's true in any shirt. Look like a massive knob. And he, by yeah. all accounts, sometimes sounds like he is one, but you know, it's just yeah. Haskell I, looks like I he's just... aging. Malander looks mental. Tom Wood. I've Tom Wood is Haskell the only one who has made that picture look decent. That's a I weird sentence. Haskell is a saint. <laughs> oh, Haskell. I mean, Haskell is no saint. He's no fan of ours either. Isn't he? No. Have we upset him somehow? We no, we didn't interact with him, but he has blocked us. Oh, that's a shame. Maybe help him out Aww. with some sort of IT as well, and he'll love us like Rob Shaw. Gee, how many how many negative Haskell tweets have we sent out? <laughs> uh, I don't actually know. I don't think we've sent. I don't think any. I don't think we've sent. Must out be any. on the pod. I think he was a he was a regular listener. I do follow the Twitter, but I can't remember exactly every tweet that you tweet. tweet. Wow. How dare you? Try <laughs> hard. Um, um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think Haskell actually has ever, into, I just think it's one of those things that people just, I don't know, you block someone as soon as you see a whiff of negativity, maybe. I quite like I Haskell, that's a shame. A player that you have to, um, sniff it all out straight away, because if you read too many of the comments, it would get to you. I suppose it's the same for every single I, sport, isn't that? <clears throat> yeah. I, I, I actually agree with that, if you're... You've, you've got to focus on a little bit of your own mental health as well, because if you're reading comments by everybody who's just, like, attacking you, it's quite hard to live your life. Twitter's it's really, demoralizing. really difficult. Sometimes I see conversations between people there where they just really attack each other, like, for no reason, and it makes me feel uncomfortable just reading it, so I can't even imagine mm -hmm. if it's about me. Okay, so the, this is... The worst yeah. ones are when... Go on, G. Go on. So this is not quite about rugby, but it's sort of about like people being toxic to sports stars. But like, there's a lot of this yeah. thing about betting at the minute, where like tennis players who like cause upsets, for example, a lot of people will lose money off that because they bet on them, and they'll just give them absolute horrific abuse on their Instagrams, on their Twitter. Mm. So you can see, yeah. you, you oh, see really? them telling them to get cut, to get, go and kill themselves. You get racist comments. You get, you get, it's really awful. And I don't blame them for, but even, I don't blame anyone for just blocking yeah. out someone who's slightly negative. Not I mean, social you media are, is... Lock them on mass. So, I mean, Sav was, I, mean, I think, I can't remember whether you were saying it today or yesterday, but social media is just generally a complete cesspool. Um, and it can be used, while it's very nice and, you know, very good things have come of it in certain instances, it is also filled with such horrific vitriol um i'd be a lot i'd be well i was saying i'd be a lot happier without it to be honest with you like you i i don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing but you become very aware of bad things and you become so much less aware of anything good i feel i feel i don't know if i'm just reading the wrong thing but even on rugby twitter or, or, or in, on reddit like it's so much easier for everyone to be incredibly negative and talk about things that are bad and just no positivity seems to come out. There, there doesn't seem to be a discussion about how things are good. Or if it is, it's like, oh, that was amazing. And there's no actual discussion about it or how it became amazing. Yeah, there's no nuance to any of it. Yeah, it's just like, oh, that was That's good. That's sort of why we're here, to sort of provide some <laughs> sort of uh, deeper meaning and understanding to what's going on. So should we talk about how many second rows could do what Brody Retallick did? Fuck all. He is one. He, he is so... That's, that, that dummy and the step, and the, he played so fucking well. It's absurd. I, just, you know, I think he was well, fantastic. That's a great question. I think he was fantastic. But fucking hell, I've been playing in England for seven years. And yeah. if you tr even try and do that as a second row, people will be like, oh, why are you doing this? It's like, he's doing this because <laughs> yes. that's how you score tries. It's, it's, I, in fact, I can imagine, yes. I would imagine there was one other and that would be Leone Nakarawa. Um, no, I think he would have done a backflip as well. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, but it's. Do you know what frustrates me, Fred? You've hit the nail on the head there, right? So we've had a preseason. I've already had a moan of Fred about my the, how my team's setting itself up this year. Yeah. I've already had this moan, but literally, uh, we we had a conversation. Our club captain, he will not be playing because he's injured. But our club captain has set this routine of how we're playing. He actually said, "I don't want us to try and score 
every single time we get a chance okay he, he literally is telling people to take the tackle rather than try and drive through and do anything else can i ask a potentially silly question and that you, drives you might not insane. know the answer to why yeah, is he gone. captain because that sounds <laughs> fucking ridiculous oh because why is he captain because he's been there longest he he's not the team captain because he won't play so the team captain is a different person he's club captain because he does a lot of stuff for the club but his his idea of rugby seems to have died in like 2003 or something. Um, I don't think it's died I think it's pretty much still a thing that that I mean that specific thing that you've just said um for Ed in, in rugby most people talk all the time about building the phases and that's mm -hmm. now pretty much a northern hemisphere style thing if you you're never going to hear the All Black coach go like, OK, uh, well, we're going to build three phases and when they're disorganised, we're going to try and attack. It's, it's going to go like, OK, there might be a, it, a hole there. Let's let's attack yeah. it straight away off first phase, not off yeah. fourth phase. In, and it's not it, just about the quality of the players that they've got. It's about the mentality of trying to always attack. In a similar vein, yeah. you know the whole the old adage that, you know, you've got to earn the right to go wide. Yeah, that's absolute bullshit. How that doesn't hold any water anymore when you look at the way no. teams like, well, I say teams like New Zealand, like how New Zealand plays. It's If they want to go wide, they'll go wide. If they want to run narrow, they'll do that. But it's the whole earning the right to do something. It's one of the, I, I saw some comments. That's safe rugby. I, I, I can't remember where, where I was looking, whether it was on YouTube or Reddit or somewhere else. But uh, regards, regarding Dan Carter as the type of player he was, talking about how, you know, Whenever he did something, it was all the right, it was always the right time to do it. You know, if it was the right time to kick, he'd kick. If it was the right time to pass, he'd pass. If it was the right time to run it, he'd run it. Um, but it, surely it's just the fact that it's the right time because that's what he's chosen to do at that moment. Because it's he has created that. So it doesn't come down to whether or not you've worked enough of the phases and you've put the hands through enough, the put the ball through enough hands and hit enough rucks that you've you're now allowed to go. You know, over there. Mm. Because yeah. if, if, I think if a lot you... of people like to put little check marks like, oh, we've done this so we can do that or we've done that. And there's I, I just I'm getting oh, I do get very my, frustrated. My by favorite. That whole mentality. My favorite is the first unlocked. face set up reward. Go for exactly. the yeah. But yeah, yeah, I mean, it, exactly. Again, it comes down again. This is this. This I do remember is it's I for whatever it comes around every now and again. But for the last week or so, I've sort of had some something of a binge on. Uh, videos on YouTube of Americans reacting to rugby, which I find weirdly entertaining for reasons I can't quite explain. But they had a video on Leone and Akarawa, and the guy watching it said something about the fact that because of the because of the way that he plays, because of the way he offloads, they are other teams would have to send you know three or four players at least to stop him. And were he with a better team than Fiji, that could be exploited so much better. Because the amount of space that then opens up, if you want to, if you want to narrow down earning the right to go wide into as small a moment as possible, if you can, you know, occupy a quarter of the team in one movement, you will then stagger the defence to such a point. Then you have opportunities and opportunities to run through them. Have Have Fiji qualified for twenty nineteen? Yeah, yeah, they're in our So group. I actually, I'm. I think, and looking at the Fijian players, I think they could actually be phenomenal. Yeah. Like ge genuinely, they've got. I mean, they they had that Bob the Barbarian. I've forgotten his name now. Who absolutely tore in. Randrandra. Randrandra. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Randrandra. Randrandra. Yeah. Whatever. It's the 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 D. Just, it's, it, it the, sounds like an N D when you say it. Yeah. Phonetically. Oh. Okay. And there's um. But, but, Tuisova as well. <clears throat> Tuisova and. Nandolo. Um, Nakarawa. There's just that, and yeah, but and I genuinely, I don't think they're going to be as bothered because what Fiji I feel used to do was kind of copy, um, and in a in a worse way with a Fijian style, of course, yeah. but copy in a worse way how the Northern Hemisphere or how the regular Fifteens would play. Right. But they've really carved a niche in sevens and offloading and playing the way they want to play. That if someone comes in and says, let's play 15s in a very similar style, yeah. I think they could run right. I, I don't think they have, because I'm sure, I mean, looking at them play, I think last autumn, I think it was, I can't remember them doing that brilliantly because while some of their individual play is still excellent, some of it is still so... I know that you can sometimes play very well in an unstructured way, but... Um, 
but it's there's very little sort of I don't know cohesion maybe to what they were doing. I suppose if you compare it maybe. to going, I mean, speaking of that Barbarians game where there were a couple of Fijians who ran absolute riot against us. Um, yeah. There are, I, su I suppose, maybe it depends as much on the opposition it does with the uh, the team they're playing with. I, what, the Eng I mean, England weren't that great as opposition that day. If um, We should cycle this back uh, to talking more about the Cardiff Blues and talking more about Wales because we have... It, well, it depends if G wants to ever come back and talk to us uh, again. I can't imagine why <laughs> but, he would, but you'd be not. <laughs> <laughs> The absolute disaster this is. Yeah. Also, we also should be probably wrapping up. Turning back to the rugby championship, know. or do you, yeah, do you, well, we could talk about the rugby. I was going to say, what what's our expectations for? I mean, we could talk about um, Wales in the in the autumn internationals, or we could talk about Cardiff Blues. What were your expectations for the coming season? Are you expecting a good a good season from the Blues? Oh Christ, I'm a bit apprehensive because you know we have a new coach, right? He seems to be talking the talk and saying impressive things and seems to be hiring the right people for the jobs that we need and hiring the right players in the positions that we need the most. So it sounds promising, mm -hmm. but the pessimist to me can't help but feel like something is going to be horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah, so so that you've got you've got a negative vibe it's... but everything's positive that's well, being fed to you. It seems fairly realist though, doesn't seem it? Seem to be Well, we got absolutely thrashed by you, didn't we? And I don't really know. I didn't really see that, so I don't really know how it went. And I went. Yeah, I went to see we, the other one, and we just mm. not lost narrowly. So we lost both of our preseason games. So I just don't know how. I really don't know, because like, but the wood. Exeter played quite a strong team against you. I will say. I don't remember who we played. Um, but it was quite strong. Not our top team, but it was quite strong. Um, okay. This might be a, a bit of a sore spot, and so, uh, how long has it been? since Warburton actually played for the Blues before he retired? Um, I think he played... Not not this last season, but the season before. I think he played quite a bit that season. So that there the is... Most amount of, uh, that, that season before last. The last, cause the last he was yeah. injured throughout the whole last one. He, that was the most Jesus. amount. He played the most games he ever played for us. I can't so remember at the very how many least, games there, it was. If he had been out for a whole season before announcing his retirement, then, then at least you have uh, a settled-in seven. Or should have, I suppose. Um, we have about we have about four, but yeah. Yeah, that's There's a way, lot of it's, seven. It's, Wales and their conveyor belt of back row players is Yeah, we ridiculous. pretty much play like a whole back row worth of sevens. Yeah. Can, can we the, borrow the, the, one? Yeah. You can have, well, Ollie Robinson's English, I'm just saying. Is he any Ollie good? Ollie Robinson's English? Yeah, I think he's very good. I don't know oh, if we've got, got any good looking for him, <laughs> he's a very good, talented seven. And you oh. know what you guys are missing? A seven. Well, we've got the cut. I've just remembered the curries, and so you know, are they, are one of them's. Six? I don't actually know. But... Twin, twindaloo. Twindaloo. They're... Sure, yeah. they're sevens. They're sevens and eights, and they're, they're back row forwards. They both play seven, um, yeah. except when they play together. Then one plays six, the other seven. Yeah. And then okay, um, so they can play seven. Yeah. yeah. Also, if you watched Australia yesterday, that you know that six, seven, and eight are the same position. Say again. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Good. No. No. It is. No. No. It, for, for the card of blue, six, seven, eight are all seven. Yeah, see, I I, I completely it agree seems with to that. Work like, and, and but... <laughs> I mean, no, actually, eight is feel... a different position because, um, well, it depends on how you're set up. But in most clubs, you will have your number eight out of the line, covering for um, covering for wingers. Eight does if... a lot of taking deep kicks as well, don't it? Yeah, they? yeah, that's what I mean. So yeah. covering the backfield, that's that's, that's why I like playing that, eight. Like covering as a winger, that'd be quite funny. Maybe as a rampaging well, you... winger. <laughs> no, no. So not going onto the wing, but covering the backfield. So when a wow. winger co when a winger goes up, say for example at kickoff, you would have your winger trying to like Corey Betty did in the first yeah. minute, going they going at the, the at defense. the ball. Then the number eight would be covering his position in the backfield until he mm -hmm. comes back, and then go back yeah. at the line. I suppose on the other side of it, you know, Johnny May has plied his trade at six. So what's to stop a six plying their trade as a winger? You know. Exactly. I'm sure it well, all works James, out. It's James Davies, isn't it? He's he's the born winger. Uh, it's, well, it's James Davies, isn't it? I mean, he plays seven, so there's that. Well, that's what I mean. So Every time he's though. played on the wing, I actually think he's been quite good. Well, no, I mean, James Davies is an Olympic silver medalist, isn't he? Yeah. Um, but he plays for six, is it, for 
You played Have seven, I played think. Four? Oh, he's a seven. Okay, I we should know so that. Many, we have sevens coming out of our arse. That's probably why I thought he was yeah, a six, because really that's don't. all I've seen him as. Um... Do you know what frustrates me is the fact that... So, when Exeter play, right, Ewers, Armand, Simmons, that's the balance. Oh, back yeah. to Exeter. And back to Exeter. Let's go back to Exeter. And people then go, oh, Armand's a seven. He should, he's the answer to our seven issue. Yeah. It's like if you watch how he plays, it's and you're not you're not watching like a archetype seven play. So why people are holding him up as the answer to England's issues? I think it, really because people like, who love, aren't playing are great. the answer. That's always been the case. I mean, can you remember yeah. when uh, George Ford started playing for Bath and wasn't playing for England? Yeah, people were Maybe. saying that he was going to win the World Cup the second he gets on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, there's. It's always the same thing. Who, who is it? Who was it recently? Who wasn't playing and therefore was the answer? I can't remember. Cipriani. Who it was. Oh, oh yeah, Smith. that one. <laughs> Cipriani was the answer, and then he did one thing, and then everybody's clung to it. Even though. Can I just double moment, check very quickly? Oh, that one thing that everyone's up. clinging to is that criminal assault, or is that kicking a ball into a corner <laughs> to get scored? That's kicking the ball into a because corner. Because I'm just going to say who... that try against South Africa was fucking amazing. You, everybody loved it, all right. But oh, if you watch Owen Farrell, he, d- he thought Cipriani messed yeah, up. He put, well, he was wrong. Farrell, <laughs> yeah, he was wrong. He was one hundred percent wrong. But like, I, I've you know, Owen Farrell reacts to how he sees things, and as soon as he saw Farrell put Cipriani yeah. put too many beans on it, as far as he was concerned, he turned away in disgust. Well, yeah. he, Far- I mean, he did the same thing against Wales in the Six Nations. He did that kick against uh, a kick to the corner for uh, May to chase. And it's basically what Cipriani did against South Africa, just at a slightly more obtuse angle. Um, yeah. Or acute angle, maybe. One of the two. Either way, it's it was good that he I did think it. it. Was a, it was reflex. It was a reflex yeah. angle. But, a math show. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to let that one slide. <laughs> niche, we dare not address it. G, G's good at maths. But uh, the well, po- it was. Um, <laughs> Don't engage see. him. Don't engage him. The point is, though, I mean, yeah, going on, you know, playing what you see and attacking how he see it, how he saw it then it's okay i mean depending on how far back you want to take it i'm um, cipriani that, played in that one... was one moment that was one moment yeah. in an england shirt where he did do well i'll give I it mean, like we scored a great try and it was he a hasn't been kick. given many chances recently though has he no he's not he's not been given enough he's not been given enough chances for people to hate him yet so <laughs> no. that's the thing. So you've got if you're away, you're the best. Unless thing ever. you've ever dated, yeah. unless you, unless exactly. you've ever dated him, that means. Actually, yeah. that's. I yeah. Yeah. The, the, had better chances to hate him. <laughs> the point. I'm sure one is G, enough. G is railing on Sip. So what's Sip <laughs> done? Get, he cheated on Kelly We've Brock, nothing man. to lose. How can you do that? Yeah. He have you seen on Kelly Brock? Brains. How can you see that? How can you even do think about doing that when you have Kelly Brock at home? Mad. Oh, Kelly Brook. Goodness. Kelly Brook, Kelly Brook. Fred, can you repeat that thing you said a second ago about... Um... It's always the same... Yeah, I was saying it's always the same thing. Um, if you're not playing, you know, yeah. people people want you to see want to see you play and say that you're the yeah. best thing ever. And then I would, I would, you need a I certain number a, of caps I, for people yeah. to hate you and want you to have nothing to do with rugby. So Pollard, for example, played you know pretty poorly yesterday. I'm yeah. sure for the two years he was away... Well, the year he was off injured... People yeah, went, oh, our only saying. solution is Pollard. We need Pollard Honestly, to come back. Yeah, I, I said it so many times. I mean, I'm gonna, admittedly, it's... I was definitely wrong, but I said it so many times. <laughs> no, but There's, it's, I it's think... not your fault. It's a normal thing to yeah. want so, I mean, to see the players that aren't um, CC has made the exact same observation when it comes to referees, in that between uh, Nigel Owens and Wayne Barnes are probably the two best international refs in the game at the moment. Angus Gardner, definitely up there as well. But... Just by maybe it's just because most of the exposure we have to it is through Reddit, which is honestly becoming something more. Certainly, our corner of it is becoming more and more of a cesspit. But it's the sort of the vitriol <laughs> thrown towards referees is just, and I, I'm sure I've taken my taken part in my fair share of it. But it's really funny to watch when Nigel Owens plays and gets you know gets absolutely slated by everyone, saying, "Oh, he's not as good as he used to be." Which, He's not, but whatever. Wayne Barnes should have refed it. But when 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 Wayne Barnes refs, it's the exact same shit. Oh, he's been crap. We should have Nigel Owens refing. Yeah. Um, and, and then a, a week later, they forget about it, and then they see yeah. something with him on so but, like either on social media, and they go, "Oh, best ref ever." But yeah, so constantly the best ref in the game is whichever of the two isn't 
referee at any particular moment. <laughs> that's a, that, um, that's but yeah, that, that's really spot on. CC, I'm, I'm sure CC uh, articulated in a much more refined mm. way, but that was his point. I mean, the best Welsh Wait, seven is the one that's injured. Yeah. <laughs> The thing, the good thing then is, Brian Moore is gets that Ed over. can give us Ed can give us CC's opinions, yeah. and then G can actually be the Welsh correspondent. <laughs> we don't need. We don't need CC. <laughs> no, sorry, CC, you're retired C- now. Oh. CC's retired. He's, he's, he's got, got a new career job now. It's fine. Yeah. He, Blaine, I mean, yeah, Blaine okay, yeah, Scully let's, uh, let's, did favourite our tweet. Let, let's quickly shill for for him. For what's what's the shot called? Rugby shop, shop rugby. I don't think shop he. Charged, I don't think it makes shop shop rugby has, in Cardiff. He has done a, an interview with uh, American international Blaine Scully, and you should all go watch that because it was a decent interview. That's a good point. Yeah. I, could, um, I couldn't even find the interview. Real quick. He hadn't really linked it, but he put it on Reddit. He put it, it was everywhere. On was it? I didn't see it. Yeah, on Reddit, yeah. But I didn't see yeah, it. Yeah. I, I thought because we'll, I saw him talk about it online, the line break Twitter. I just didn't see a link to it. All oh, right. Oh, okay. Gee, we will link it to you. Um, and then I'll finally see how well CC actually sounds because I actually have no idea. <laughs> oh my goodness! Even though um, he nodded okay. at me once at the game. Wow. Uh, G, you have been tagged in that now. Cool. Cool. Done. Um, so we should do this thing, which I've seen on other podcasts, where, where we, we say goodbye. link or share to something that we quite like, and then we say goodbye. Oh, okay. So Ed's Ed's just done that brilliantly for CC. Fred, is there anything that you would think that we should watch or share? Yeah, nice no, putting me on the spot there. <laughs> yeah, just straight to Fred. Think oh. really quickly. I've, I, I can do my one. Uh, just yeah, you. when whenever you watch Australia, um, watch where mm-hmm. the guys are set up in defence because they don't follow the normal patterns. You will see Folly in defending in the hooker channel quite a lot at lineouts, um, mm-hmm. with Pocock out at ten and things like that. So if you're oh. watching Australia, okay. look for those things. And Japan do the same thing as well. All right. Um, my one is I, we, me and Fred were probably going to have a talk about this. In fact, we did we have a talk about this that um, last chance you yep. uh, show. So don't watch that. Instead, um, take a critical glance at the uh, Man City. Yeah, I'm um, watching that right now. Video on Amazon Prime. Um, um, just I, I I've heard it's quite good. I don't know if Pep's a good coach or oh, a bad no, he's coach a, in terms of the absolutely way. amazing. Um, okay, but just watch that. I, I, I'm going to watch that, and just hopefully it's going to be. Don't weird. just don't think that. Just don't copy what he does, thinking that that's coaching because he has, he has professional players who are all adults and earn two hundred grand a week, and that's a lot. and the way it's cut is you know on the emotions rather than on on the technical aspect. So you'll see you see a bit of him. No, you don't actually see the, the you know the more juicy, interesting parts of of his work. But I'm a pretty big okay. fan. Uh, G, do you have anything that you want to share with the world in general? Um, butts. 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 Who doesn't love butts. a butt? Butts. Who's butts in particular? Uh, I have no one in mind right now. Just no specific. Just, not biggest I, butt. Not specific. I have really to be honest there's not been a lot of new butts that have really like stood out surely it can't a be a back so really, it has to be a forward so really right? if there are any players it's a question to listening. ask for uh, the next time she's on once the season starts we can have a follow up question as to a uh, we can call I it butt watch or something equally butt funny watch. or appropriate watch <laughs> just have a weekly butt yes. watch yes <laughs> this is our new I mean, I'll, I'll problem, come up with a little theme tune the it would have been all the, um, the players coming up now are a bit too young so it just it's getting borderline creepy to oh, try and find new butts feels a bit yeah, a bit oh, different. Dear. Borderline creepy to like find new butts just because they're all too young. Is, is Marcus Marcus Smith is too young? Marcus Smith too young? Yes. The Curry's too young. Yeah. yeah. You'll think, always yeah, have George Ford though, I, won't you? So. George George Ford's butt. There you go. Um, I, I've not. I don't. I can't really remember that. It's been a while since I've seen George Ford. There was George a picture on um, of Glasgow. Though. He's an adorable creature. Just like you know, like, I like tell you what, that could be the title. Like how a puppy is cute. <laughs> is that the title to this podcast? George Ford is cute as a puppy. Oh, you've got to quote it. I mean, fair. I fair think it's a great thing, thing to end I get, on. I get where you're coming from. So that's been Lime Rick Rugby. Goodbye. <laughs> Um, no, right. It, well, we should say goodbye. I've been Sav. Yeah. Uh, this has been Line Break. There's, there might be. I don't actually. I haven't got an outro. The intro's changed, but the outro. Please outro's tell me you finally changed. added the French bit in the intro. Penguin.
them in possession. They haven't had much of this ball. And they kicked it away again. Toby Flood. God's towards... sake! Send him off! Send the dirty guys off! Get him off the field! That was diabolical! It wasn't rugby, so we haven't played a game of rugby yet. I think we might have to go and train after this. Up and over and bloody head over biscuit. Very interesting, very good, yeah. Very good. Three cheers was really wonderful. Very good, very good. Okay. Yeah, okay.